Uh, another video for you guys, more so a bit of a repeat video of, a, of a, uh, something I'd already had posted on my channel using U-drills on a manual lathe. Not something that many people would do or even think to do, but there's definitely some advantages to using a U-drill. Uh, financially, it's probably not, but we'll cover some of the things about using the U-drill on a manual lathe that I didn't really do that well in the first video. It was more so in regards to a comment that I received uh, asking more questions about setups and so on. So that's what I want to do in this video is talk more about how to actually set up and cover more in detail um, the different styles of holders, uh, setting up a manual lathe for it, uh, different um, coolant pumps and so forth. So I'll just go through my setup and then you can reflect on how you want to do yours and, and some of the information that I show in this video will be helpful to you. So not wasting too much more time. Probably the first thing that was asked was, in the comment was uh, tool holders what options have i got on tool holders so i've got probably the two most popular versions in front of you at the moment uh, over on the right is the er collet chuck and over on the left is the uh, side lock so i'll grab the side lock up most of you are pretty familiar with the er but i'll just grab that in a moment anyway so, so side lock beam for those who don't know uh, grub screws on the side of the tool holder not the most accurate thing but they more of an more of an econo holder than an actual accurate holder because there is a bit of a little bit of side play i can say well they're not my go-to let's say my go-to as far as tool holders go but they do get the job done it's probably good enough for a u-drill so obviously you've got a flat on the side of the u-drill which you can see there and the grub screws obviously come down and lock in the bore okay so i've tried to already do this video but i made a mess of it so i'm back to for take two now so that's why that's why i've got coolant sort of in there i've already sort of half made this video and I'm back again um coolant line feeding in on the side you can usually buy these holders on ebay or wherever you buy your tool holders from they usually have this coolant uh, line already poured it in you're probably better off to buy it with it poured it in because generally the material is fairly hard to be able to drill and tap so pretty much forget about converting a side lock to coolant through you're better off just buying a separate tool holder just for that and you can always use as a dry setup okay so the er which is probably more universal i prefer the er myself but obviously i've got both only reason i got that is because i needed it for a larger tool and this goes up to a fairly large size the er um, 40 which is in which is which is this tool holder here goes up to well you can stretch them up to about 32 mil that's a 25 mil in there at the moment with a 25 mil matching shank on there the other one is a 32 so you're probably stretching it i don't have a 32 mil collet but i have a 30 so that's as far as i've gone up to so you're sort of stretching to as i say but that might suit someone who's probably doesn't have the new yard collet chuck but as as i've mentioned in the reply the ER collet has is more universal. I suppose you can use it for a lot of other things. You can just change the collet, whereas that you're stuck with one size. Whereas this you can go for any size, anything that's in that range. So, as far as uh, ER forty goes, everything from two mil, well, pretty much all the way up to thirty two mil, if you can find the collet. So the downside to the ER is obviously the serrations in there, so the actual collet can actually clamp. So I'll just take it out for those who are not be familiar with an ER collet. Make sure I cover as much in this video as I can without trying to make it too long. So obviously most of you are familiar with the serrations in there. So it clamps universally all the way down the tool rather than your other style of um, collets that are available. The ERs are probably more as far as accuracy goes. Now what you'll need to do to set it up on there, which I did cover in the in, in a comment to reply in the comment was you'll need just get that back a little bit. Okay, so you'll need a nylon washer. Okay, just make that up yourself. Add a bit of a nylon material and an O-ring to suit that size, to suit that size tool or or slightly larger actually. Because what you're trying to do is block off the coolant. So what I'll do is I'll go away and I'll set this up and I'll bring you back. Okay, so there is a little bit of a bit of a knack to try and get this right so it's probably not the best thing to do but what you have to do is hold this in something more than likely a vice which is what i do and then i use a soft blow hammer so something like that okay or soft dead blow hammer and do the nut up 
I'm probably over explaining this, but I want to make sure I'm covering things that could come up in questions. Okay, do that up neat as you can by hand. Okay, even just nip it up with the spanner. Okay, and just give it a tap. You don't need to whack it. You just need to give it a tap. And all you're trying to do is to swell the O-ring in there. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll go and I'll go and do that, and then I'll come back. So without actually taking you over to the vice, which is a little bit too much mucking around, and it'll just drag the video on too long anyway. So you're probably hard to see there with the black nut against the black O-ring. What you're trying to do is just knock that down, as I say, knock that down with the nut nipped up, swell the O-ring. So you're making, all you're doing is using, you're squishing the O-ring between the collet, okay, and the, and the nylon. So you're just swelling that O-ring out to make a seal around there. You'll, you'll normally get them pretty good. If it starts to leak, you just have to go back and do it again anyway. So there is a little bit more mucking around, but the ER, I prefer the ER collet myself. Uh, as I say, a bit more universal over the side lock. So the next thing to probably think about is just more so the setup on the lathe. Try to cover as quick as I can without making it too long. You'll need some sort of plug. In this case, I just used a purge plug from when I used to do um, stainless steel pipe work. So that's just as you, you wind that up, it swells up. Okay, this is a three inch or 75 mil. And that just swells up so what you do is that blocks up the end of your hollow bore on your actual lathe so when you break through with your u-drill the coolant will start to flush down the bore and eventually find its way to the end you don't have to have anything blocking the end a rag if you're just trying to do it on the economically but you'll definitely need something there because you'll be standing up at the machine working away and then you'll and you'll look down and wonder why you're standing in coolant so and usually when, when you put coolant on a manual lathe, as most of you know, most of it finishes up on you or on the floor. So that's something to think about. How you set that up is up to you, but that's just one way that I do it. Um, another setup, I'll just bring you up onto the chuck and we'll do a bit more talk about up at the chuck. We'll take you over and talk about coolant pumps, and then we'll do a bit of a demo on showing you different volumes, and you can work that out for yourself, but it's just trying to feed you with as much information as possible. So I'll just get you repositioned. So as you can see, we've got your point at the chuck now. We've got a piece of material held in the, in the chuck jaws at the moment. I've deliberately put a, a hollow piece of material there or something with a hole already in it. Um, if you do use U-drills, totally up to you, of course, but <coughs> excuse me, um, it's not recommended to go through material that's already got a hole in it, okay? If, it, if it's larger, if the hole is larger than the U-drill, okay, so argument say this is a 24 mil and you had a 25 or 26, six, six, so on, so on, you can go in there and you can use the actual insert, okay, like a boring bar, and you can come across and clean out the hole using the, the actual insert. Obviously, you need to have the, the tool facing the right way to where you're actually traveling into the part, so make sure you're actually cutting into it because the... You'll need, as I say, you'll need to work that out yourself. So you need to clock that round the actual insert itself. So bring you up nice and close. Hopefully, we can get that into the camera. I'm sort of standing around the front in the bad position at the moment. So you can see the insert. You can see an outer insert, okay, and you can see an inner insert, okay. So that's cut in the center. So they overlap each other to clear out the material to get the hole out. So obviously, you need to be cutting on that outer that outer insert, okay, and you can clean up the hole like a boring bar. But don't use a huge room. As I say, I'm not there to tell you what to do. That's up for you to work out. But it's not recommended to drill into material that's already got a hole in it. Okay, that's totally your choice. It's preferably to use a boring bar or a drill and open it up and do it that way. Better to drill into solid material. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just get the lathe set up and we'll just go for a little bit of the coolant to the floor prevention now. I've uh, got your hand held now, so you have to excuse the bumps and moves that we're getting now. So at the back, well, starting off with the probably, well, I could say the probably most important thing, which is the chuck guard, which is fairly common on uh, newer lathes, but probably not so much on older lathes. Obviously, you don't need it if you're doing general turning, but it does help if you want to control. They are even handy to control chips especially if you're turning things like 4140 or something like that. Obviously, when you're outside the chuck guard, it's not doing much anyway. It's more of a safety feature for the chuck, more, as I say, more so on the later laves than the older laves. So obviously, this came with it, um, and it's probably something you probably need to think about doing if you want to run new drills. You can get around it, but you'll have to have a mop handy <laughs> to mop up the mess that's going to go all over the floor and pretty much 
everywhere. So especially if the coolant gets to that chuck, once the coolant gets to that chuck, you'll get the propeller effect. You'll have coolant going everywhere and it'll just make you crazy. And you'll be thinking this is the stupidest idea I ever thought of. Um, a little mud flap at the back there, which you can see is covered in rubbish and things like that. So it stays on there all the time. So that's hanging down whether the trucks, whether the actual chuck guard's closed or not. So that just stops the coolant flipping up over the back of the machines. You can see the wall's still pretty dirty anyway. I don't have as much time to clean the machines as I used to, sort of so busy doing jobs and trying to do YouTube videos. So bringing you to the front, we've got a nice thick piece of rubber at the front here, about five mil thick. Okay, so as you get them when they're rolled up on, when they're rolled up, when you're going to buy them from your rubber supplier, so you have that little curl on the bottom, you just hook it inside the machine. Okay, so that it'll hold in there and the coolant will return back into your tray rather than onto the floor. You will get a small percentage on the floor, but how you set it up and where you're drilling the hole, if you're outside the chuck guard, obviously you're going to have coolant on the floor and possibly on you. So that just these are just preventative things to help to control coolant, okay? And I can show, I'll just show you one other thing that I do set up on here just to help to control the coolant. And I did say there was one more thing, but I, I forgot to show you this because it was sort of hanging down the bottom. Um, I've got this piece of rubber here with some magnets sitting on the corner there. And all you do is just stick this on the corner of your apron, okay? Obviously, it's not going to work because I've got a camera pointed at it. I'm trying to use one hand, it's not fun. Okay, so the magnets just stick on each corner. Now, this isn't going to do a great deal of work for you, but it's definitely better than nothing. Okay, so just get that pulled out. And it sort of acts as a bit of a catch the water as it's running down. So when you start running coolant, as most of you know, if you've ever run coolant on a manual lay before, or even on twist drills or whatever, you'll pretty much know that you're getting most of the coolant on the floor, if not on yourself. So this whole area will be covered with coolant and eventually will be trying to find its way to the floor or to you. And then this is just to catch some of the coolant that's dripping down off the apron. As I say, you won't control all of it depending on how long you're drilling for, but um, an old pair of overalls or something like that on the floor would definitely help as well anyway. So just put them there so you're walking around and that's so you're not tracking coolant all over the floor everywhere. Just bring you back up to the top, sort of working your way back up. And knock my tripod over. Not the, not the cleanest piece of plastic, but this is one that sits in my lathe. Have a mighty mag down the, down the bottom there, most of you guys in the USB familiar with. And that's just stuck on there and, and actually pegged in there to hold this piece of plastic there. So that's just to control some of the coolant that's actually splashing back out onto the, uh, back out to, onto the apron and back out onto you, I suppose. Really, it, As I say, it depends on where you're drilling. So that's sort of your RR setup where you'll be running. Uh, with your coolant line, you know, your quick release, uh, Festo style, pneumatic style fitting. Just clip your hose in there. The plastic hose is probably the best because it'll bend as you're winding in and winding your tailstock in and out. And you could run a you could run a U drill on your on your tool post, but probably don't recommend it. Probably better if you just use it on the tailstock. So that was one other question that was that came up. But it's probably as for me, I would run it just on the tailstock. So how you do it's up to you. I can just tell you how I do it, okay? And just quick release back out. Uh, 10 millimeter hose, just a black plastic hose, sort of common type of Vesto style, you know, pneumatic style hose. Uh, bringing you over to the coolant line, which I'll raise, as I said, I'll do a quick demo with the coolant. Um, just a valve to be able to control your flow, okay? Just a ball valve. And just bringing your tool in slowly and just slowly increasing your coolant as you work your way in. There was a little bit more of that in the other video, but I'm trying not, trying not to get you to watch that video more so. The information's in this video to help you get started, but you're welcome to go and watch that video, but there's not a lot of information on there. And it'll just increase your coolant as you get into it. So we'll just, as I say, we'll show you the coolant flow differences between standard pump and the upgraded pump, which I've put on my lathe now, which you'll probably have to think about. And that's totally for you to decide once I show you how the coolant flows work. I need to take you over to my bandsaw because it's the only place I've got a standard coolant pump. So I'll get you set up over there and we'll keep going. Fairly typical um, handheld again. Um, over on the bandsaw, as you can probably see, uh, fairly typical type of coolant pump you'll see on oh, pretty much most um, manual laves, especially if they're made in Taiwan or in China. Uh, these are a Taiwanese made coolant pump. If you look in the back of your lathe, you'll probably find one of these if that's something similar, possibly. 
Um, they're about, well, they rate him at 20 litres a minute, but they are, I'm sort of sort of hard to believe that with the flow rate that they can seem to get out. I did test it for the flowing the coolant into a, into a bucket draining out the sump one time and there was nowhere near 20 litres a minute coming out. But obviously it depends on the size of the hose you're running. Uh, we, I'll be running it with a um, eight millimetre hose, but you can sort of the theory is you could run a larger hose to get a better flow. But um, generally you'll get to a certain point where you actually stop increasing flow or well, actually pressure if anything else. So you're not used to the light as you're putting a larger hose on, it will start to sort of run, well, you'll gain, but then you'll start to lose. So you'll lose pressure and you'll gain volume to a certain degree. But once you get to your maximum output that the little pump will put out, uh, then you're struggling. So I won't worry about showing you the one on the on the lathe anyway. It's a little bit hard to see in the back of the in the back of the lathe. Most of you are probably familiar with the lathes. You've got the coolant pump at the back of the machine, so it's very difficult to see that through the opening. But it's pretty much um, probably three times the size of this. Exactly the same to look at, but just a lot bigger. So um, and that flows at about. Well, the rating for that's about 70 litres, so you'll definitely see the difference when I start to show you the flow rate side by side with the same U drill. But obviously, we're running a larger, slightly larger hose with that pump. So you've got 8 mil here and 10 mil over on with the 70 with the 70 litre unit. So you'll have to put up with the sound of the bandsaw running, as I say, because it's the only coolant pump that I've got that's a sort of standard sort of a comparison between. What you what you will have typically on your on your manual life so we'll just turn on the coolant and sort of get a bit of an idea of flow rate okay so it's not bad hopefully that's showing up okay it's probably not the best because i can't really get the light in here that well it is leaking a little bit because i haven't got an o-ring at the front there or behind the floor i should say but that's not bad you sort of see what that's sort of like okay and then we'll take you over onto the over onto the lathe and show you the coolant flow on there comparing the standard coolant pump to the upgraded pump. Now handheld back at the manual lathe again. Um, so we've got the, oh, sorry, the higher, we can't say higher pressure coolant pump, uh, more so higher volume than anything else. So hopefully this will give you a bit more magnification. Okay, hopefully I'm getting you into a good spot where I'm not putting my hands in the camera and the coolant hose is not in the way. Okay. I'd probably sort of simulate where where the actual other coolant pump was. Hopefully this is going to work okay. <laughs> yeah, probably this handheld is probably not the best. That's probably somewhere around, I suppose, you guys would have to say, I guess. It'd be the same, wouldn't you think, about where, where it was before. I'm going to have to sort of tilt that over because when I sort of turn this on to higher pressure, it's going to make a mess. So that's roughly, maybe it's probably a little bit faster than before, but thereabouts, okay. I'll just pause you and bring you back because I can't do this hand one handed. It's fun trying to set this up. <laughs> As you can see the difference. So and it's pissing like a school boy now. So you can definitely see the difference there. And that's only two coolant outlets, which is more than enough for, for this U drill. Obviously they know what they're doing, they design these U drills. So you can obviously see the difference in the coolant right there. So that's pretty much full open. I was gonna sort of wind it on slowly but trying to hold the pull and turn the coolant on was a little bit of a battle. So you can definitely see the difference in the flow rate there. So that's mainly why you need a uh, higher volume, or I probably should say the reason for it is to get the chips away from the cutting edge, because you drills definitely love coolant. So that's something you need to think about too when you're running uh, U drills on a manual lathe. You can get away with the standard pump, but you will be struggling to clear up the chips and you'll probably start probably burning up inserts. Hopefully, I'll just get this pause and we'll just come back for a finish. Definitely making a mess all over my lathe. I hate when that's the thing. One, the one thing you'll definitely hate is this is a good way to finish up the video. Is one thing you will hate when you start running coolant, as most of you know, is trying to get water from under the slide ways. It's just that I have to, I, um, get, I get really pedantic about water on my slide ways and trying to get the water back off or coolant back out before we're trying to clean that water off before you start to wind this your compound in in and out so when you're sliding just when you're coming back in and out on your on your lathe make it keep it simple terms and the water will get underneath and you'll have this 
uh, milkshake th sort of scenario happening, mixing corn with your oil, and it takes it's a bucket to get the water back out of there. You sort of got to flush it basically out with your lube with your lube system, and then try to wind it backwards and forwards to get rid of the water. So that that is a bit of a nuisance, but that's going to be common regardless of whether you use U drills. Uh, if you're just using coolant on a manual lathe, but it's one thing I definitely like about being on a CNC lathe is you don't have to worry about coolant on slideways and everything like that because the automatic lube systems in it just keep flushing continuously, flushing out the the oil from the slides. So, but um, that will probably cover everything that I can think of in this video. Sorry to have to come back in another video um, and do another video of the same thing I should have done. It was just sort of answer some questions that were missing in that first video and a bit more explanation on using new drills on a manual lathe. It was a bit longer than I thought, but I wanted to try and cover as much information as possible. Uh, and otherwise, I'll probably see you guys on the next video. I have got a, a few videos planned for the manual lathe series, I suppose you could say. I've done a couple of welding videos, now we'll get back on the manual lathe again. A couple of videos of some ideas to share with you guys, but just a matter of having time to do videos. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. Hopefully you got something out of it, and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye for now.